Good day everyone, this is Dr. Soper here, and today we'll be discussing how to create data tables and use the Goal Seek tool in Microsoft Excel. Let's get started by taking a look at the three major topics that we will address in this video. To begin, we'll learn about Excel's PMT or payment function. Since the payment function is a core component of the examples that we'll use relating to data tables and the Goal Seek tool, taking a few moments to ensure that we understand the payment function will certainly be worthwhile. After that, we'll learn about data tables in general, and then we'll work through a detailed example of how to create and use a two-dimensional data table in Microsoft Excel. Finally, we will conclude the video by learning about Excel's Goal Seek feature, which is a very useful tool when we know the result that we want a specific formula to produce, but we do not know the input value that is needed in order to produce the desired result. To facilitate our discussion, we will be using Excel to determine how changing different input parameters affects the payments for a car loan. Specifically, Given our budget, we'll be figuring out what sort of vehicle we can afford to purchase, be it a very small economical vehicle, or perhaps a very large luxurious vehicle. Now that we know what lies ahead, let's get started. In Excel, the payment or PMT function allows us to easily compute the amount of each payment for a loan, assuming that the amount of each payment and the interest rate remain constant over the life of the loan. These two assumptions, that is, a fixed payment and a fixed interest rate during the loan period, are very common among the types of loans that most people have during their lives, such as mortgage loans or car loans. To use the payment function, we need to provide Excel with three different pieces of information. The first required input is the periodic interest rate, which we can think of as the interest rate associated with each payment for the loan. For example, if the annual interest rate for the loan is 6%, and we are making one payment each month, or 12 payments per year, then the periodic interest rate would be equal to 6% divided by 12 or 0.5% per payment. The next required input for the payment function is the number of periods or the number of payments for the loan. For example, if we have a three-year loan and we are making payments each month, then we would have a total of 36 loan payments. The third required input is the present value for the loan. This is simply the amount of money that we are borrowing which is also commonly referred to as the principal for the loan. Note that when using the payment function in Excel, we typically enter the present value for the loan as a negative number, because from our perspective, we are taking on debt, and the loan has a negative impact on our personal wealth. Let's see an example of the payment function. Here we have a simple Excel worksheet which we can use to calculate the payments for a car loan. To begin, let's assume that we want to borrow $17,000 to purchase a car, and that we will have an annual interest rate of, say, 7%. Further, let's assume that we want a five-year loan, and that we will make one payment each month for a total of 12 payments per year. With this information, we can easily compute the periodic interest rate by dividing the annual interest rate by the number of payments per year. We can also easily calculate the total number of payments by multiplying the duration of the loan in years by the number of payments that we will make each year. In this case, we can see that the loan involves a total of 60 payments. Now that we have all of the required information, Let's use Excel's payment function to calculate the amount of each loan payment. The first required input value for the payment function is the periodic interest rate, which we have in cell B7. The next required input value is the number of periods, 
or the total number of payments for the loan, which we have in cell B8. The final required input value is the present value of the loan, which is also known as the principal, or the amount of money that we wish to borrow. Remember that we typically enter the present value for the loan as a negative number because from our perspective we are taking on debt. I will therefore enter a minus sign in front of the reference to cell B2, which contains the amount of the loan. As we can see, under these conditions, our loan payment would be $336.62 per month. Using our worksheet, we can easily see what would happen if we change one or more of the input parameters. For example, if the interest rate were to be 2% instead of 7%, then we can see that the monthly payment would be reduced to $297.97. If the terms of our loan required us to make just one payment per year instead of 12, then the total amount of each payment would be $4,146.14. Similarly, if the terms of our loan required us to make four payments per year, then the amount of each payment would be $1,014.75. As you can see, the payment function can be very useful for examining different loan scenarios. Now that we have a good understanding of Excel's payment function, Let's learn about how to create and use data tables in Microsoft Excel. In Excel, we can use data tables to simultaneously see many different answers to the same problem, given different combinations of input values. For this purpose, Excel allows us to create and use both one-dimensional and two-dimensional data tables. A one-variable data table allows us to see how different values of one variable in a particular formula will change the results produced by that formula, while a two-variable data table allows us to see how different values of two input variables will change the results produced by a formula. Let's see an example of how to create and use one of these two-dimensional data tables. Using the car loan example on this worksheet, Let's imagine that we wanted to see how changing both the annual interest rate for the loan and the number of payments would impact the amount of each loan payment. A two-dimensional data table is perfect for this type of analysis. To begin, let's list all of the different interest rates we want to consider in columns F through L. In this case, we will consider annual interest rates ranging from 1% to 7%. Next, let's list all of the different repayment terms that we want to consider in rows 5 through 9. In this particular example, we will consider car loans ranging from 24 to 72 monthly payments. Now I'll take a few moments to format the worksheet in order to improve its visual appearance. Now that our worksheet looks a bit better, let's proceed with building our data table. The next step in the process is to provide Excel with a reference to the formula that we want it to use in order to calculate the values displayed in the data table. The cell reference must always appear in the upper left corner of our data table at the intersection of the row and column which contain the different values that we will use in the analysis. In the current example, the cell which needs to contain our reference formula is cell E4. The final step is to provide a reference to the formula that we want to use in order to construct the data table. In this case, we are interested in seeing how the loan payment will change under these different conditions, and so the formula on the worksheet that we want to use is located in cell B10. Now we are ready to ask Excel to build our data table. To do this, we first select the boundaries of our data table, including the row and column headers, 
which contain the various values that we would like to consider. We next click on the data ribbon, select the what if analysis drop down box, and then click on the data table option. This will cause the data table dialog box to appear. As you can see, this dialog box asks us to supply references to the row input cell and the column input cell for the analysis. In our example, the top row of the data table contains annual interest rates, so I will use cell B3 as the row input cell, since cell B3 contains the annual interest rate on our car loan worksheet. Finally, our column in the data table contains different values for the total number of payments for the loan. So I will select B8 as the column input cell, since cell B8 contains the total number of payments on our car loan worksheet. When I click the OK button, Excel will construct our requested data table. As you can see, the amount of each monthly payment varies widely depending on the interest rate of the loan and the total number of loan payments. Now that we know how to create and use data tables in Microsoft Excel, let's learn how to use Excel's Goal Seek feature. In Excel, the Goal Seek tool can be used when we know the result that we want a specific formula to produce, but we don't know the precise input value that is needed to produce the desired result. Excel can solve these sorts of problems for us, but to do so, we need to provide it with three input values. First, we need to provide Excel with a reference to the cell that contains the formula we are trying to resolve. Next, we need to tell Excel the result or output value that we want the formula to produce. Finally, we need to tell Excel which input value it should change in order to get the formula to produce the desired result. With this information, Excel can then calculate the input value that is necessary to achieve our desired output value. Let's see an example. Using this car loan worksheet, we can see that if we want to borrow $17,000 to purchase a car at a 7% annual interest rate, then our monthly payment will be $336.62. Let's imagine, however, that the absolute maximum payment that we can afford is $300 per month. What interest rate would be required in order to get our monthly loan payment down to $300 per month? Excel's Goal Seek feature is the perfect tool for answering these kinds of questions. To use the Goal Seek tool, we first click on the Data Ribbon. We then click on the What If Analysis drop down box and select the Goal Seek option. This will cause the Goal Seek dialog box to appear. As noted previously, the Goal Seek tool requires three input values. The first input value is the reference to the cell where we want our desired answer to appear. The cell should contain the formula in which we are interested. In our current example, we are interested in achieving a loan payment of $300 per month. Cell B10 on the worksheet contains the formula which calculates our loan payment. So I will select cell B10 as the set cell. Next, Excel asks us to specify our target output value. In this case, we want our loan payment to be $300 per month, so I will enter a value of 300 for the to value parameter. Finally, we need to provide Excel with a reference to the cell whose value it should change in order to get our formula to produce the desired result. In our example, we want to know which annual interest rate would be required in order for our car loan payment to be exactly $300 per month. So the value that we want Excel to change is the annual interest rate in cell B3. Thus, we have instructed Excel to set the loan payment equal to $300 by changing the annual interest rate. When we click the OK button, Excel informs us that it was able to find a solution to the problem, and when we click the OK button again, we can see that Excel has entered its solution to the problem in cell B3. We now know 
that if we want a monthly loan payment of exactly $300 when we have a $17,000 loan payable over 60 months, we will need an annual interest rate of 2.272%. As you can see, Excel's Goal Seek feature can be extraordinarily useful in helping us to find the input value that will get a formula to produce a specific output value. Well, my friends, thus ends our overview of using data tables and the Goal Seek tool in Microsoft Excel. I hope that you learned something interesting in this video, and until next time, have a great day.